Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Uh, this is lecture number six in a group of lectures dedicated to easy probability problems. It's uh, presented as part of the advanced course, advan advanced uh, mathematics course for teenagers on Unizor.com. I do suggest you to um, watch this lecture from this website because there are comments, notes actually, which state more or less the same thing which I'm talking about, um, but you can use it as a textbook actually. And what's more important is um, the notes basically present you the problems as, as I have listed it here and um, allow you to basically do it yourself. That's the purpose of the whole course, quite frankly. Um, the theoretical concepts which I am explaining have only one purpose in this particular case, just to introduce you to mathematical concepts and language um, which are supposed to be used in solving problems. So solving problems is the goal. Um, and that's why it's very important for you to try to do it yourself before listening to my lecture and uh, uh, you might come up with a different solution, but in any case, that, that's the most important part of the whole course, not the theory which I'm explaining. Theory is just the language, and the real purpose is to solve problems. So, uh, a couple of problems, um, not very uh, difficult problems, but still kind of educational. And um, I told you before that probability actually, especially the probability in discrete cases, is very much based on um, combinatorics, which I definitely encourage you to um, to be familiar with on a very good level. Uh, you can use the lectures in this course, which are preceding the probability, or from any other source. So I'm assuming that combinatorics is something which you know. Now, the problem number one. Okay, you have n balls in a box, they're all, this, uh, they're all the same uh, weight and the same size, so you cannot distinguish them by weight and size. And they are of n different colors, lowercase n. We have A1 of the color number 1, we have A2 balls of color number 2, and we have A n balls of color number n. So they're all in this box. Now, um, let's consider they are mixed together and we are randomly picking up m of these n uh, balls. Now, when I'm talking about randomly, it means basically that every set of m balls out of n has exactly the same probability as any other set. So equal probability is assumed is if the word random is used without any kind of explanation how random it is. I mean random can be different obviously but if I'm just saying random without anything it means equal probabilities for all the outcomes. All right so we pick m of them. Now what I'm interested in is What's the probability of having among these m number of balls of the color 1 equal to b1, number of balls of color number 2 to be b2, etc., and number of balls of a color number n to be bn. So numbers b1, b2, bn are given and obviously their sum is supposed to be equal to number of balls which I have picked from the from this box from this box and obviously sum of these also equal to the number of balls n so this is what's given in the box of different colors and sum of the numbers is supposed to be the total number of balls. Now this is what we would like to have. Uh, we would like to, to know the probability of having exactly this 
and obviously they should be equal to number of balls I'm choosing and obviously again any bi should be not greater than ai because I cannot pick more balls of any color than it's given to me right so these are conditions now I have to determine this probability all right so let's assume um, as usually a very theoretical approach to this if I would like to know the probability of certain event first of all I have to think about my sample space so what kind of elementary events exist now if I know the number of these events I can assign the probability of each one of them since we're talking about random distribution without any specification it means that every outcome is equal probably has the same probability as any other outcome and then all I have to know basically is to count how many elementary events um, comprise this event which I'm talking about let's start from the beginning what are elementary events ba basically any group of m balls which I pick from the n is an elementary event right so the total number of elementary event is number of um, combinations from n by m now that's where your knowledge of combinatorics comes handy so number of combinations which is n factorial divided by m factorial and n minus m factorial that's the number of different combinations of m balls out of n if we are choosing completely randomly these m balls so this is supposed to be the denominator in my probability because one over this number is the probability of every elementary event so if e is my elementary event which is a certain number of balls um, number is equal to m but certain composition of balls if this is the elementary event its probability is equal to 1 over this which is m factorial n minus m factorial divided by n factorial so that's basically the denominator uh, this is the denominator of this and the probability is 1 over it that's the probability of each elementary event now let's talk about which elementary events are comprising the event which we are interested in okay this is our event so how many different combinations of m out of n balls satisfy this condition well I have to pick exactly b1 uh, combinations of the first color and how many times I can do this how many different ways of doing this well that's obviously number of combinations from a1 by b1 from the a1 Col uh, balls of this color number one I have to pick B1 so this is number of choices which I which I can make now with each of them I have this number of choices for the second color and with each of them I have for any other color up to the ends and with each of these I can choose each of these each of these and each of these which means I can put the multiplication so this is the total number of different elementary events or if you wish different sets of m balls when b1 balls are of color 1 b2 co balls of color 2 and bn balls of color n so this is the number of events and I have to divide it by the total number of elementary events which is as we were talking about before is this one and that's the answer and of course you can convert it into factorials if you want etc but that's not the interesting part of it what's interesting is this is number of all events and that's why one over this is the probability of one event this is the number of elementary events which comprise our event which we're interested in and that's why this is basically a the probability which we are adding together uh, all the different probabilities for all the different events elementary events which comprise our 
um, event. All right, that's it. Now the second problem. Uh, well, it looks it looks very much the same, but it's actually a completely different problem. Um, so. Um, I actually would like to model this as a pinball machine. Remember, in the good old childhood, we had a board like this, and um, you have some kind of a spring-loaded launcher here. And there are pins here, and there are different, well, holes or whatever you call here. Now, you launch the ball from here, it goes all the way and then goes randomly and falls in one of the holes. So that's the game I'm talking about. Now, um, there is no other controls just by, 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 uh, by this particular uh, spring-loaded uh, launcher. Um, so you just uh, load the ball, shoot it, and then it falls in one of these holes. Now, let's assume um, that there are M holes here. And let's assume you have N balls, which you launch one after another. Now, what I'm interested in is assuming that the probability to hit any one of these holes is the same. So. All these pins are really very randomly distributing uh, the, the balls among these holes. Again, very randomly. What I mean is that the probability of any ball to hit one of these is exactly the same as to hit another. So we have m different results of our outcome. And the probability of each is 1 over m. Now, the question is, Considering um, I have a certain random um, variable which can take um, the values, actually it's a, a set of random variables. Um, each random variable is the number of balls which appear in each of these holes. Now if I have n balls, then either all of them can go into one particular uh, hole I mean, there is a non-equal non to zero probability of that, right? Or another, or they can be distributed evenly, or not evenly, or whatever it is. So I'm interested in the distribution of balls, of n balls, among m holes. Now, how can I basically mathematically express what I want? Well, very easily. I want the probability of half k1 balls in hole number one, k2 balls in hole number two, etc., and km balls in hole number n, m. That's what I'm interested in. I want this probability. Now, if I know this probability for any k1, k2, km, I'm happy. That's exactly what I need. I can then calculate what's the probability, for instance, of all the balls going into one particular um, hole and nothing into another. Yeah, I can calculate it. I put this is equal to n and this is 0, 0, 0, 0, right? Or if I'm interested, for instance, in 2, 2, 2, 2 and the rest, whatever the, the, the very last one is, I don't know, m minus 1 times 2, and then everything else goes to the last one. Again, I can basically uh, calculate this, assigning this as 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and the km to be n minus some of these, right? So I can always do that. Now, what's my conditions? Well, now, obviously, each one of them is from 0 to n, and also their sum should be equal to n. If these are number of balls in each of these holes, then their sum is supposed to be equal to the number of balls which I have, right? From 1 to n. 
Well, that's the condition, that's the problem, and let's just think about how to solve it. So we don't need this picture anymore. And let's again um, introduce the, the logic of theory of probabilities. What's my elementary events? What's my sample space? Well, let's just think about it. Obviously, the, any particular distribution of balls among holes is an elementary event. Now the question is, how many of these distributions are? And since I'm talking about completely random distribution, all of them have the same probability. All right. Well, that's actually very easy. I have n balls, right? n balls. And I have m holes. Now, how many different uh, outcomes I can get for ball number one? Well, it can go into the first hole, the second hole, etc., to the m hole. So we have m different um, outcomes for the first ball. Now, how about the second? Well, exactly the same thing. And with each of the first, I can get each of the second. So I have m for the first ball, m for the second ball, etc., and m for the nth ball, which is m to the power of n. So m to the power of n is my uh, overall number of outcomes um, of the distribution, actually, of the n balls among m holes, right? Change. OK. So this is denominator, basically, in all the probabilities which I'm talking about. Because 1 over m to the power of n is the probability of every elementary event. OK. Now, that's the event which we are interested in. Question is, how many elementary events, how, how many individual distributions are comprising this event I'm interested in? Okay, let's just think about it. I know that K1 balls are supposed to be in the first hole. Now, what kind of balls? Well, any K1 balls out of N can go there. So, basically I would like to know how many different choices of K1 balls uh, can can go into the first hole. Well, if my total is n, then it's a uh, number of um, combinations from n to k1. That's the number of choices for uh, the group of the balls which are in the first hole. Now, how about the second hole? Well, obviously, all other balls, and how many of those other balls? n minus k1, right? Can go into the all other holes, and I'm interested in the second hole to be k2 balls. So that's number of uh, combinations from whatever is left after I have selected for the first um, hole, whatever is left, and I'm supposed to choose any k2 balls to go into the second hole. Now, what's the third one? n minus k1 minus k2 to k3, etc. And the last one would be n minus k1 minus k2 minus etc. minus k uh, n minus first, and this is k nth. That's the product of uh, different numbers of combinations. And that's what makes the number of elementary events, number of individual distributions of n balls among m holes, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that's not supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be m, not n. We have only m holes. 
Okay? So this is the total number of different distributions of n balls among m holes with k1 going into first hole, k2 to the second, etc., and km to the mth hole. That's the total number. And as I was talking before, that should be divided by the total number of all the different distributions, which is m to the power of n, and as we were just talking about. So this is the answer. The only thing is, it can actually be simplified, and let me just do it very quickly. I mean, this is the answer, you can leave it as this if you want to, but in theory it can be simplified, and here is how. Uh, now, n uh, should be here, k1 should be here, and n minus k1 should be here. That's the first member, right? The second member is n minus k factorial divided by k2 factorial and n minus k1 minus k2 factorial. Next one n minus k1 minus k2 factorial divided by k3 factorial and n minus k1 minus k2 minus k3 factorial, etc. Now look at this. This is cancelling out. This is cancelling out. So what's my last member? My last member would be n minus k1 minus k2 minus etc minus km minus 1 factorial divided by km factorial and n minus k1 minus k2 etc minus km minus 1 minus km factorial that's my last member and again the top is um, cancelling with the previous member so this is cancelling with the previous member. So what's left? I have this, I have this, 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 and this, and this one. Now what is this one? Remember the sum of these k, 1, 2, 3, etc., m, is exactly equal to n, because that's the distribution of n members, n balls, among uh, m holes. So this is 0, so 0 factorial, it's 1. So the total, the answer is n factorial divided by k1 factorial, k2 factorial, etc., km factorial. That's the number of elementary events. And I have to divide it by m to the power of n if I want to get the probability. So this is the probability. It's a little bit easier formula than this one. And that's the end of this particular lecture. Well, first of all, I do suggest you to go to the website. Uh, the notes contain these problems with answers and with solutions. Again, if you didn't do it before, um, do it now. Solve these problems just by yourself. Don't look at the solutions and uh, forget what I was just talking about during this lecture. Try to do it yourself in writing on a piece of paper and see if you get the correct answer. Um, and in general, again, remember that my purpose, uh, the purpose of this whole course actually, is for you to solve all the different problems. Mathematics presents huge field of different problems and uh, forget about practical usefulness or non-usefulness of mathematics. That's not the purpose right now of this course. The purpose is to introduce you to this process of thinking creatively to approach problems, because if you know how to solve all these problems, it will be easier for you to solve practical problems, even absolutely not related to the mass, because your mind will be tuned to really like, okay, what if I do this, what if I do that? You have to look for a solution, you have to look for the way from point A to point B, if, if there is no way. You don't know how to get from A to B, there is no formula. You have to really invent something. And this creativity is the most important part of all these lectures which I'm trying to introduce to you too. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.